Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'm going to show you how to taxi and take off in the DCS F4E Phantom using real life checklists and procedures. Alright, we're sitting here in our F4E, ready to taxi to the runway and take off. When you taxi, use minimum power and be sure the RPM is idle before initiating any turns. Never taxi faster than 60 knots with the canopies open. And when heavily loaded, try to make wider turns in order to relieve excessive side loads on the gear struts. Okay, after you get clearance to taxi and the wheel chocks are removed, add some power and immediately test the brakes as you start rolling forward. If you don't have any brakes, now's the time you want to find out about it. This is the first item on the taxi checklist. Then press and hold the nose wheel steering button and wiggle the nose left and right making sure it works. Also, check if the instruments react correctly. This is the mantra. Needle left, ball right, compass guard decreasing. Needle right, ball left, compass guard increasing. Oxygen. Normal, normal, on. Mass pressure, good. Then the wizard checks the same. Optical sight, set. Either to standby or to caged, as you wish. Harness and leads, fasten and secure, in both cockpits. Internal wing transfer normal so that fuel can be transferred from the wing tanks to the fuselage tanks stab augs engaged remember the startup procedure they were off until now also i found out why you want to delay engaging the stab augs as much as possible it's an old analog system and with every little bump on the taxiway you want to keep the system from beating itself to death thanks for the clarification vulture flight controls free and correct just make sure the wizard's knees are clear Anti-ice, normal. Stab trim, check down three. There are actually two different ways to take off. Either with one division nose down trim for an earlier rotation, but then at around 230 knots the jet will want to pitch up heavily and you'll need to be prepared to counter it with nose down trim. And all this is happening at a very low altitude, so better set it to down three. Fuel, check the quantity and make sure the external transfer switch is either off or in the outboard position if you're carrying wing tanks. If you carry a centerline tank, never ever set it to center on the ground, only after getting airborne. If you select center, the tank pressurizes immediately after liftoff, and if there's a leak, it can contribute to a tank fire. And this is where you pause the checklist until you've been cleared off the arming area. In real life, the canopies were left open for taxiing most of the time, unless there was really heavy rain or something. Alright, weapons armed, pins pulled, we've been cleared off from the arming area. After that, you close the canopies. Only when takeoff is imminent, unless you want to be in the sauna under the hot Southeast Asian sun. So canopies closed, lights out, stripes aligned, in both cockpits. Then defog foot heat set to foot heat. If you set it to defog, for some reason, it can very suddenly generate a thick fog inside the cockpit as you apply full power on takeoff, which you definitely want to avoid. In the back seat, command selector valve open so that the WISO can initiate an ejection too. Lower guard down in both cockpits so the seats are armed and ready. This is not yet implemented in DCS. Alright, we are ready to request takeoff clearance and take the runway. As you stop on center line, the pilot calls for the lineup or before takeoff checks. Last minute stuff you need to take care of before plugging in the blowers. External transfer, check again, verify it's either off or outboard, never center. Flaps down. Skid on, lights out. Be sure to release the brakes before you turn it on to avoid brake hangups. Compass, check that it matches the runway heading. Pitot heat on. IFF normal. All circuit breakers in, in both cockpits. Warning lights out. Now you're ready to roll. Hold the brakes and increase the power to 85%. Any more than that and you risk rotating the tires on the rims. Check for normal RPM response and about 450 Celsius EGT, 4000 pounds per hour fuel flow, nozzles one quarter, and oil pressure between 30 and 40 psi. If everything looks good, 
Release the brakes and advance both throttles to mill power. Check the RPM, EGT and nozzles once again, then go full burner. Below 70 knots, keep the nose wheel steering button depressed and stay on center line using the rudder pedals. Above 70 knots, the rudders start to become effective so you can let go of the nose wheel steering button. Smoothly apply full aft stick as you start rolling or in any case before reaching 80 knots. Doing it too late at higher speeds and yanking it back too hard can result in over rotation and the stabilator hitting the ground. A big no-no. When the nose wheel starts lifting off, gently bring the stick forward to maintain a pitch attitude of 10 to 12 degrees and keep it there. As the jet flies off the runway, clean up, raise the gear and then flaps above 180 knots and accelerate. Note that the flaps can be blown up by the airflow automatically as the airspeed increases, but still don't forget to raise them. The rudder may jump as you retract the flaps if you apply any lateral stick input because the aileron rudder interconnect disengages. At 300 knots, you can come out of burner and at 350, use pitch to maintain your airspeed as you climb. Adjust the pitch trim as necessary, you only need to use the trim a lot when flying the F4. One more thing about the slats. If you hear a chattering sound and you see the utility hydraulic pressure indicator fluctuating during flap slats retraction, maintain your airspeed below 250 knots and cycle the slats and flaps. Alright, you're airborne. Wasn't too difficult, was it? Okay, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and interesting. Please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. See ya!